All right, I'm going to be showing this Highfield Mask Texture Mapper tool for Houdini. Basically what this does is it will read in all the masks from your height field and let you map those one-to-one -to, -one to PBR materials for each of those masks. All right, I wanna show you a few renders um, that it kind of give you an idea what the tool can do. Here, there are a few masks. One, we have the steep mask for the rock, um, a more shallow mask for what's called the grass mask, but we have some ropey uh, lava flow here. And then the very shallow grass mask, here we just have um, some smaller rocks. And you can see how these really blend together uh, for a very natural look. Um, same or similar setup, different angle lighting. Um, here's that same setup as before with just uh, three di very different um, materials that are, were assigned. And also the you can notice the blending here looks really good. Oh, and, and, and note that um, I am definitely using displacement on these. Um, but these this is just a terrain, just a terrain with the three uh, materials mapped to the masks. And what that looks like is an HDA that points to your height field and can go and grab those masks and map them directly to one of the materials specified, either Redshift or Karma. And the order can also be specified. Uh, the lower the order, that means that it'll be on show up on top. <clears throat> and once a uh, once you're ready, you can create that composite material. And what that then looks like is it takes all of the materials that were specified and blends them together using the masks. Um, another thing to note, though, is when these are all copied in, these are actually all copied by reference so that any changes you make here will reflect in the actual mapped material so that if you need to regenerate this, um, the values are actually held back in the original materials, um, which, is, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> All right, so next I am going to go through the entire tool, how to use it and what it's doing. All right, so there are a couple of things you need to have in place before you can use this tool. One is you need your Redshift or Karma materials. Redshift being just in a Redshift uh, material builder, BopNet, and the Karma material needs to be uh, in a material network using uh, MTLX nodes. I'll give a Karma demo after this one. <clears throat> all right, and the second thing you need is to have all your masks ready. I already have some masks I, I, um, I'm visualizing here few different masks on my height field um, and then you'll actually need to have a cop network to pull in those layers uh, into the materials um, <clears throat> but don't worry I have included a utility in the HDA the last tab is a utility and here we're just pointing to the height field node that contains all of the masks so this is just at the end of my my node graph there, um, and I can just hit create cops plans for my high field masks. It'll let me know that that node was created in my height field node, and then it'll let me know all the masks that it was able to extract. Okay, I can go into my height field, see this new node, go into there, and for every mask that generated uh, these cops plans. And note that uh, the naming is important. The HDA will then scan here and look for anything with uh, out underscore in the name, and it'll consider that a potential mask to map to for the composite material. All right, we have everything we need to start using the tool. I'm going ahead, going ahead 
and delete this node and just set it up from scratch. Just type in aux and the or terrain texture mapper should come up. HDA is loaded. <coughs> and we need to, I already showed you the utils. Now we need to configure this to point to the right nodes. Okay, we need to let it know about the copnet. Uh, height field copnet node. And we also need to know uh, where we want to create that composite node. And I already have material node set up, uh, desert comp. And we can see that this material node has nothing in it. <coughs> but but uh, our composite material will be generated here. Okay, now that these are set, um, we can pull in the nodes. So if we click update mask sources, uh, and uh, just to note we're in Redshift, update mask sources. It'll read from that copnet node all the out nodes. Um, and now we can map our materials to here. And uh, this is for the desert. So I'm just going to give it um, a rock on the rock mask, um, the <clears throat> sand on the grass mask, and the mud I'm actually putting on the low grass mask. Okay, uh, so you don't need to fill in all of these masks. Um, whatever is on the bottom of these masks will um, will pretty much be applied to the entire terrain. Um, I definitely want this mud on top. So the lower value goes on top. We'll put uh, the sand next and then the rock will be on the top. So this this is basically just how Photoshop would work with layers because um, these masks are definitely have some overlap. Okay, so once that once these are there, we can go ahead and click on create composite material. Um, it'll bring us over to the composite material we had specified, uh, the desert desert comp and we can see the three materials that are brought in and these are just collapsed by default um, and these are all referencing as I said before these are referencing the original material if you add nodes here that's obviously going to work different than the ma original material and also you cannot add nodes to the original material um, if you do you would want to update that and then it'll it'll uh, copy all the nodes and then reference every field <coughs> so that it matches Meaning any of these values that I change in here will change back in the original material. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and assign our height field to that's assigned to that, uh, to that composite node, except, and if I go ahead and go to render, Oh, and um, keep in mind that on my height field node, I have my tessellation and displacement enabled. Um, pretty much default values. Um, smooth, smoothing will ha definitely have an effect on it. Um, sometimes it looks a little better without it. Sometimes it looks better with it. All right, we have our material re rendering. We can see the textures blending nicely. All right, another thing about this tool is if you <coughs> change the masks and update the copnet, you can then go ahead and click the update mask sources again. Um, any any um, deleted mask sources will be deleted here, but any matching mask sources will actually retain their assignments to the materials. Which is nice. You could update that as much as you'd like. Uh, just make sure it's updated in the copnet as well. Uh, the other thing is we can create this composite material over again and it will completely override whatever is currently in um, that config node. That for, for this one it's the desert comp. So no matter what's in there, if I whatever I want to change in here and, and I create that composite material again, it'll delete and repopulate in that desert comp node. All right, last I'm going to show you the process for Karma. 
So everything is pretty much the same, except for a couple of things. One, uh, obviously have the karma texture reference method selected. And then the other thing is you need to have a folder selected here to render out the um, copnet images. The reason we need to render these out and then pull them in to the composite material is because if we try to reference those nodes directly, like with the redshift method, it actually does not allow it to multi-thread the render and will slow it down tremendously. So this is just a little workaround we have. Um, <clears throat> shouldn't be too big a deal. Um, this is what that looks like. It just renders out the cop images and then they're, and they are then pulled into the composite node as masks. All right, so with everything there, let's go ahead and try to render uh, out Karma, Karma viewport. All right, there we go, pretty quick. Um, let's go ahead and bump up the displacement. And we get a lot of placement there and that's it